Rothschild Wishick and Sands LLP, attorneys representing professionals since 1991. McClellan Park, a Sacramento-based corporate community offering commercial real estate, hotel, conference center, and airport services. Coming up on Rob on the Road, we're taking you all across the state, starting with an exclusive tour of Catalina Island. Escape the hustle and bustle of life to explore this enchanting island getaway. This is one of the most scenic spots of the island, and I see why. Plus, an international icon in San Francisco says, come on in. You have a behind the scenes tour for us. Yes, we do. Of some spectacular art. Open the doors and step back in time at Coit Tower with a special treat just for you. And we are surrounded by hundreds of California sea lions and elephant seals. Rescued and rehabbed sea creatures get a second chance at life in Sausalito at the Marine Mammal Center. Hi, baby. Let's go back home. And later, go with me atop the California State Capitol Dome, closed to the public for more than 50 years. But that's not the case today. All right, I can't believe we're doing this. A hike you won't soon forget. And it's all coming up on... And now, Rob on the Road, exploring California. Hi, I'm Rob Stewart, and this time we're exploring California with a half hour dedicated to some of the Golden State's most shining treasures. California is home to nine national parks and perhaps America's most spectacular coastline with majestic mountains and timeless redwood forests, stunning beaches, and pristine lakes. It is the state where you can work and play every day. We begin on world famous Catalina Island in Southern California, historic, unspoiled, and abundant in both natural beauty and amazing visitor experiences. It's a place unlike anything else, just a short ferry ride from the Southern California coast. So we are in for a treat today. We are in downtown Avalon on Catalina Island with Ron Lauder. Good to see you, Ron. Good to see you. Been a tour guide for 30 years here. So I guess you know your stuff. I know my, most of my way around. I, I don't get lost very often. Now there's a famous loop that a lot of people take on golf carts. Right. Mm -hmm. This road is one of the longest coastal roads on the entire island. It's a whole mile and a half. This island's so mountainous, we don't have a lot of coastal roads out here. The main mode of transportation on the island is a golf cart. a golf cart. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's living. Yeah, City of Avalon actually limits the number of full-size vehicles allowed. I understand that there's about 4,000 people that live here on the island, but a million tourists a year. A million visitors a year come out here. That's phenomenal. Stop and look at that. That is unreal. That right there says it all. Oh, I always think it's beautiful out here. You can see about four miles down to that last point down there. That's called Long Point. That's where the island's at its widest. It's about eight miles across our island from there. The length of our island from the east end to the west end is around 21 miles long. So we've got a total of 76 square miles of island out here. And here to the left, we'll see what's called the Inn on Mount Ada. This was originally built back in 1921 as the home of Mr. and Mrs. William Wrigley Jr. They were, of course, the chewing gum Wrigleys. And when they built the house out here, Mr. and Mrs. Wrigley would spend a lot of time enjoying their summers here on the island. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but the Chicago Cubs trained here on the island for over 30 years. That's fascinating. That was a ball team, of course, owned by the Wrigley's. That was one of the ways that Wrigley wanted to attract visitors here to the island in the springtime. And once William Wrigley Jr. arrived here for the first time and saw the island, went out in the hills and explored the interior of the island, he fell in love with it. And all of his partners really wanted to develop the island. But Wrigley had the foresight to see that this, this island was very beautiful and very natural, and that should be preserved. 
because back in 1919, he could see that Southern California was growing rapidly. Originally, all of Avalon was considered to be the world's largest one-floor hotel, and it was all tents. Well, eventually, over the years, those tents were replaced with these little cottages we see here today. This is Wrigley really enjoyed uh, succulent plants. Here in Avalon, in order to enhance the, uh, the beauty of the town, she planted her garden up in here, and she collected succulents from all over the world. So beautiful. And look at the sun just cresting over the beautiful Wrigley Memorial. We just crossed over the opposite side of Avalon here. So we just weaved our way around the loop, and we're coming back down into Avalon. Coming back down into Avalon again. That is just spectacular. So that is so Mediterranean looking to me. Yeah, we have a Mediterranean style um, environment here on the island. In fact, our climate is basically the same as the Mediterranean. You can travel all over the world and still not find a place like this. Uh, this place really is oh. magical. There's uh, you know, beautiful sights to see. The water is awesome. The people have been friendly. Um, everything's just been a wonderful experience here. It's just calm. I mean, living in LA, it's so busy. And just to escape here for a little bit, and it's like time just kind of slows down. The Catalina Island Conservancy was deeded over 42,000 acres of land from the Wrigley family in 1972, and now manages about 90% of the island, including 62 miles of shoreline. We met up with Matt McLean of the Catalina Conservancy. Well, this is Stage Road. This is the uh, primary road from the town of Avalon out into the interior. This is like the Galapagos of California. <laughs> it is. Actually, Catalina, you know, you'd think that uh, there wouldn't be a lot of uh, endemic wildlife, but we have over 61 endemic species that are found nowhere else in the world. So it's really important to kind of protect this land. And so that's why the Catalina Island Conservancy was created. There's just not a lot of land like this anymore. You know, here in California, certainly, but even across the world. I spotted the bison. Yep, there's a herd of bison. So our, our bison are kind of iconic here for Catalina. Um, they were first brought over in 1924 by a film crew who were actually coming out to do a movie. Um, unfortunately, they never ended up in the movie. And so when the uh, film crew left, they left the bison out here. Well, here we are on the opposite side of the island, and uh, oh. just, it's amazing. You know, just the, it, it seems like the whole vibe changes when you come over here. This is probably one of the most iconic uh, scenes and panorama that's on the island. come from all over the world to see what we just saw. Probably one of the best things about my job is I get to kind of share that secret with everybody else. And so hopefully you know, we want people to come over and experience some of that same magic. The magic of Catalina Island. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. What a pleasure. Yeah, we're psyched to have you. Now let's head into the city by the bay, San Francisco, to visit an international icon, Coit Tower, home to some of the most amazing Art Deco murals you'll find anywhere. Coit Tower is named after Lily Coit, a wealthy San Franciscan who paid for the monument's construction in 1933. Her love and appreciation for the city's fire department explains its distinctive look, like a fire hose. Let's take an exclusive behind the scenes look at this unique landmark.
Well, look where we are, somewhere I've been dying to come to, Coit Tower for an amazing behind the scenes tour with the master tour guide here, Davey Crockett. Good to see you, Davey. Good to see you. I'm glad you guys were able to come today. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. You've got a lot to show us here at Coit Tower, which went through major renovations. Now it is shining in its glory like it was meant to in the very beginning. So can we go inside for a tour? Come on in. Okay, thank you. My goodness. About 2,000 people a day come in here during the summertime, and what we're trying to do is do a paradigm shift in terms of having people care about the art rather than just taking the elevator ride to the top. The murals are spectacular. It blows my mind, the vibrancy of the colors here. Well, it's the nature of fresco. It's earth pigments that have been ground very fine, mixed with distilled water. At 80 years old, this fresco still isn't cured. So technically, this is still a drying painting. I am so excited about what's next because behind a closed door and up the stairs, you have a behind the scenes tour for us. Yes, we do. Of some spectacular art. Let's go take a look. Let's go take a okay. Davey, why are the murals in the hallways blocked off from the public? Well, there's no protection up here. So we bring people up here with no more than eight at a time under docent supervision. And you know, I'm sure that you can hear the echoey sound. It's because we literally are in the walkways all the way up to the top of White Tower. Here you see a lot of sports and athletics and Outdoor life in California. Outdoor life in California. That's exactly what this is. Who is the artist here? This particular artist was Edward Kurata. He was a native Japanese, very famous art professor in Japan. Over here, this is called the playground. Ralph Chessie was the only African American painter in here from New Orleans. That makes me think of something. This painting being by the only African-American painter then in here. This painting right here, this mural by the only Asian painter at that time in the mural project here. And that leads me to the point that these murals were also about social justice. Absolutely. The interaction among the artists, the fact that they were men painting, women painting, Asians, African Americans, all on the same par. Isn't that fantastic? And I love that it was ahead of its time. Very much so. This room is different than all the rest. Absolutely, different material, different technique, different color palette. This is Jane Berlandina, who painted on dry plaster using egg yolk tempera. Well, we've made it to the top of Coit Tower. Look at this view. You see Treasure Island, you see the piers, and you see the San Francisco Bay Bridge. This is the outdoor deck, which is closed to the public. The Belvedere level, correct. The Belvedere level, and tourists go about 20 more steps higher, and they're behind windows. But right now, we have the perfect opportunity to do a 360 tour of the city. So can we do it really quickly? Absolutely. Okay. Come on ahead. Let's go. So look at this part of town. Transamerica Pyramid, Telegraph Hill. Let's keep walking. Look at this. Washington, Washington Square in the heart of Little Italy. That's St. Peter and Paul's Church with the Swires. Look at the Golden Gate Bridge. And up there you'll see the curvy part of Lombard Street with all the cars creeping slowly oh, down. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. And there's Alcatraz. In all its splendor. And then we make our way back over here to where we started. Such a splendid view. I'm it glad you guys were able to come and take a look at it. Literally leaves me speechless. <laughs> it is 
a special place. I had no idea the things I would see here and the sights I would see here as well. So thank you. You're very welcome. Here at Coit Tower on Telegraph Hill in San Francisco. Now let's head just north of San Francisco Bay for an intimate look at the Marine Mammal Center, one of only two facilities dedicated to saving seals and sea lions along the California coast. It's rescue and rehab time in Sausalito, where marine mammals get a second chance. Dr. Sean Johnson is the Director of Veterinary Medicine here at the Marine Mammal Center. Good to see you. Nice to meet you, Rob, and really appreciate you coming by and visiting the Marine Mammal Center. I'm so glad to be here. What a pleasure to showcase the science that happens here. We are surrounded by hundreds of California sea lions and elephant seals right in this area. It's just an incredible place that we have here where we can join the, the rehabilitation, the science, and the education and the outreach here all at the Marine Mammal Center. Each of these animals has been rescued? Yeah, each one of these animals has been ill or injured for some reason along the 600 miles of coastline that we respond to. So we send out our volunteers, we rescue them, we bring them up here to Sausalito, we provide them the best veterinary care that they can get, we collect samples, um, we provide, we do research and, and try to better understand what's wrong with them, the diseases they have, and really the problems that are causing them to come here. So Carr, you can keep working while we jump in here, but this little fella's a month old? Yes, he's about a month, uh, probably or so, based on his teeth. They're just, they've just recently erupted, so they're still quite small. And you put so, him to sleep. Yep, he's under anesthesia. His little flipper yeah. has to hurt. Most definitely. So this is a really small little flipper that we're dealing with here. What is the ultimate goal, the end result? Will you release him back into the wild? Yes, we think if we can get this cleared up that he would be able to be released. You also teach many of these animals how to eat fish because they've never seen it. They were rescued. Yeah, a lot of them are so young that they've never been out in the wild and they don't really know what a live fish looks like when it's chasing around. So we have to do what we call fish school. And we'll take a, a fish and pull it through the water to simulate a, a live fish in the water mm -hmm. and to get them stimulated to try to catch the fish. These animals are set for release? Yeah, so we have some sea lions here. They've been here a few weeks, and you can see they've gained some weight, and they look happy and healthy. Boy, they do. Yeah, they do. They look good and probably be released today, I believe. <laughs> oh, they are ready to go. Yeah, they are. It They're works. I, I know. It's so much fun to see them at this stage when we're ready to take them back down to the beach. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, a reunion with the wild Pacific. Seals and sea lions, after weeks of care, are going home at Point Reyes National Seashore, an hour north of Sausalito. Hi, baby. Let's go back home. So we're gonna do one, two, three, and then we're gonna press, okay? One, two, three. Go. Oh. Bye-bye. Yours is just a little scared. It's okay. Are they sweet or what? them they're going the other way. That's all they have to do. Yeah. All right, round three. Ready? One, 
two, three, go. I love it because I hope that the older ones will teach the youngsters and show them the rope. I hope you're not afraid of heights. We all know Sacramento is the state capital, but what about climbing atop its iconic capitol building? Let's do it. There's a dome on top of the dome, and we're going to scale some very old and slightly scary stairs to discover some of Sacramento's most breathtaking views. We've made it up to the second floor of the California State Capitol. We are headed over to the elevators where we're going to go to the fourth floor and then a special entrance. No roof access, but not the case today. This is so exciting. Fifth floor. Sixth floor. Oh my gosh. Just look at that view of Capitol Mall, the perfect spot to see this. We are on the first level of the colonnade. Just look at these beautiful columns. They are so massive up close and so historic. And I love it when you can just reach out and put your hands on history. I love that kind of thing. Speaking of history, we have a Capitol expert and historian Vito Scromo with the Department of General Services here at the Capitol. Good to see you. Good to see you again, Rob. Yes. Great, thank you. Great to be with you. So exciting to be up here, which is close to the public, but yes. you're taking us on an exclusive tour today. Yes, exactly. And it's a combination of the architecture, the wonderful grounds, and then the views here really make it a spectacular visit, and I hope you enjoy it. This has been closed since World War II. Because of safety concerns and not meeting codes for access, so it's not open to the public, but it has wonderful historical lessons and architectural lessons. So as we walk up there, you'll see. Okay, let's go through this sure. door because what's on the other side will blow you away. My goodness, look at this. Beto, this is the dome. This is the inner dome and we have a two do dome system. This building heavily remodeled in 1975, that took until 1982 to complete. At the time, it was the largest restoration of any building in North America. It's been the second largest attraction in the state for visitors. My goodness. Where are we going now? We're gonna to go to the second level of the colonnade. Look at this. And what I find fascinating here, is Sacramento was called the city of the trees. If you look, the panoramic view from here shows you how many trees we have, and you pick the best time of year to be here because it's like a carpet of color. Oh, yeah. So you have a spectacular view of Sacramento, the Sierra Mountains, and the surrounding area from here. All right, I can't believe we're doing this. This is the staircase to the top of the building. Are we up to code? We are not up to code, but it is definitely okay. safe. You notice, too, Rob, as we're walking, it moves a little bit. I feel that. You see the rods? Yes, I don't point that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's designed to be flexible in case of an earthquake, those rods will cause this to move without falling. So this is actually one of the safest places in the building. We're almost at the top, but I want you to see one section of the fencing that's been taken out. Okay. And it gives you a spectacular but scary view of what the uh. distances are between the upper and uh, lower dome. We're looking 90 mm -hmm. feet down. So before the fencing was here, this is what workers had to deal with. Whoa, Vito, that is scary. It is. How high up in the air? 90 we? feet. And from the ground? From the ground, we're close to 237 feet. And when we get to the top part of the building, which we're gonna get now called the cupola, <gasps> we'll be 237 feet above ground level. So first of all, the architecture, what you'll see here is 19th and 20th century you'll see the top of this space that has hooks. They used to hang gasoline lanterns. There. No way. The lanterns were hung there for lighting. So when the restoration occurred, they added these lights. And these bars you see here are for seismic safety, but you don't see them when you're down on ground level. No, I've never noticed them. You never notice them. And then if you look around, you have, I think, the pinnacle of all the themes we talked about. And it really takes me back to be up here. 
Yeah, you know, people ask me all the time, what do you, what emotions do you have when you come up here? And what I think about hits me is the 165 years of history that I'm standing on. I mean, you talk about all the major legislation, events, people that visited this building. I mean, it is a huge treasure. I mean, we have really explored the Capitol in a way that I've never seen before. Right, and most unfortunately the public can't see, but through your show they can. Vito, thank you. It's a pleasure, Rob. What a pleasure and a treasure here thank in you very California. Much. On top of the state capitol, can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs>what a treat. Well, that's going to do it for us this time on Rob on the Road Exploring California. Check out our website, robontheroad.org, for videos from all across this golden state. I'm Rob Stewart. We'll see you next time. Hey, Bison. Hey! If you look at this part of the building, it's cast iron. In the late 19th century, the building was struck by lightning. To order a DVD copy of this program, call 888-814-3923 or visit robontheroad.org. McClellan Park, a Sacramento-based corporate community offering commercial real estate, hotel, conference center, and airport services. Rothschild Wishikin Sands LLP, attorneys representing professionals since 1991.